Hello, hello, everyone. Let us know if uh, you can hear me, see me loud and clear. Sorry for a couple minutes late, but speaking of tax day, I had to send out the final picture to our CPA so we can get it all done. Once again, in terms of taxes, this is our first year doing it, so we stand by recommendation, get a CPA. Uh, but, ta-da! Hey, Joe's computer, we have Lisa, Moonlight, Mula, love it. And then the first one in the chat this morning, or this afternoon, G. Jasso. Is it Hasso? Hasso, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, so how's everyone doing? I know it's... Oh, we had to file an extension. Yeah. I understand. We were, we, were, we were scared we were going to have to file an extension. Um, in terms of taxes, we ended up having to pay. It's not the best feeling, but... That's fine. It's fine. Oh, finders, not keepers. We were going to text you yes. the other day. We were. We were going to text you because we haven't seen you. And I know you give us heads up, but we were going to say hello and tell you to join us. We you actually, guys are all doing good tonight. Yes. Promise. This is a cold brew. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so before we get going, again, I'd like to always let everyone know. As the title says, we are Sell Quick, Ship Quick. And uh, together we're reselling, and we do a bunch of other stuff too. Um, we work together, and if you really want to get a hold of us quick, the best way to do it is Instagram. Instagram. Just go on and DM us through Instagram. Same name, Sell Quick, Ship Quick. Oh, we miss you too. It's weird not seeing your stories in the morning. Yeah. I'm and so used to hearing... About at, your day. at least just hearing you talk, even if we don't always see you because you were filming something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> and we were, uh, spoke to Vic Mary this morning, kind of, in Thrifty Vikings uh, oh, yeah. Live. Which, that, thank you. A little heads up, on Wednesday, that's 10 a.m. Eastern time, we're going to be on Thrifty Thrifting Vikings? Yes, Thrifting Vikings Instagram. Uh, we're going to do it live with them in the morning. For us, that's 7 a.m. So, yeah, we're going to wake up for that one. Mm -hmm. so, uh, big time procrastinator. And, yeah. Well, you bring us into our topic, being that you are hardly organized. Yes. Our topic for today is actually about being organized and how that helps mm -hmm. workflow. Um, I do want to say that's what helps us, but... There's plenty of research out there. I'm not going to cite it because I don't have it in hand, but there's plenty of research out there that shows that when you're working in a more organized environment, you're more prone to be more productive. Yeah. I mean. Oh, uh, Kawaii Cactus, Rebecca, Brian, the Oak Brook Prickers here, our fellow 75 Hard Challenge participant. Yes. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's a challenge we're doing. A few of us, it's slowly been growing. Yeah. Um, Brian, the Oak Book Pricker, is doing it. We got inspired by Loretta from Thrift Love Sell. Um, I missed the very first part of Reseller Revolution, but I think Chrissy is doing it. Um, sure. And then Lisa in the chat, Kiki's mom, she's also doing it with us. We are on day 29. Day 29 of 75. I will say, so this is our challenge is getting through this 75 days and doing all the steps that we need to do. If you guys want more details, by all means, DM us. But the biggest thing from it is at first we were like, okay, day two, day three. Now I didn't know what day we were in. Yeah. Um, oh, uniquely me. So 75 hard. We follow Andy Frisella. He's um, the CEO of a company, of a supplement and nutrition company called First Form. But he has a really good entrepreneurial podcast out there called the MF CEO Podcast. And if you follow him, you listen to him. He started the 75 Hard Challenge more so for himself because of a bet. Um, but it's to create mental toughness. And this challenge has been... It's, it's been eye-opening. Yeah. Um, but the point of the challenge, you have five things that you're supposed to do, one of them being a gallon of water a day. Um, you have to follow a strict diet of some kind. So for us, we're doing intermittent fasting. Some people are doing keto. Loretta from Thrift Love Side, I believe she's doing paleo. Um, Brian is cutting out 
his uh what was it something that he put in the last chat but a put, restaurant put on the chat what you're cutting off there um and you also have to do a progress picture every day and then read 10 pages of a motivational non-fiction entrepreneurial type book um so that was the five diet workout Oh, two 45 minute workouts. There you go. <laughs> two 45 minute workouts every day. One of them has to be outside. Um, and the point of that is you being outside is um, you can't control that. So if in Kiki's mom weather. is in Portland, or not Portland, in Corvallis, uh, Oregon, and she's, she's a good example, she's going through rain and wet shoes and just not the most comfortable by exactly. all means. Um, while she was with us here um, a couple weeks ago, she she's awesome. She's very supportive because we had to do our outdoor, what we call our urban hikes, and she joined in. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm not going to get in the way. I will be supportive. Let's go do it. And after doing it a few times, she's like, you know what? I'm in. Yeah. The difference, though, is she was doing her walks in, in California weather. In Los Angeles specifically. Yeah. And then um, she got to Oregon just in time to find out that it's – pouring yeah. rain <laughs> oh i just want to say hi to everyone that's joining us thank you so much for coming in if this is your first time we appreciate it thank you um you can find us on instagram too where we're so usually we are yeah yeah and that's again quickest way to get to us um and then also comment on here let us know so today's topic which we keep just skimming over is being organized and productive because you're organized. So in the comments later on or in the chat now, what do you do to get organized? You know, let's talk about the beginning part, you know? Um, there's always a first step, which sometimes is the hardest. Yeah. And yes, hit the thumbs up, please. Um, Culver's, we don't have a Culver's here, so I have no idea what that is, but custard and cheese curds. Mm custard <laughs> um so with the organization the last i think with the 75 hard challenge it's really been it's squeezer time yes that's, that's the hardest part for us or the biggest uh change because we we are if you guys don't already know we are also personal uh trainers, trainers? um so in terms of working now that's not it, it, it's not too far out there for us the difficult part is dedicating that time no matter what which yeah, means in no our excuses. case no excuses we had 90 days 90 days sorry 90 minutes a day where we had to dedicate to some kind of activity yeah so if it's midnight or you know 11 o'clock if it's 11 o'clock at night and we still owe 45 minutes we put on our walking shoes and we hike the hills on the back side of our house because that's that is part of our five our big five for the day. Yeah. Um, and I think doing this challenge has really pushed us to hone in on organization. Yeah. Um, organizing our time. With the goal of being efficient. Exactly. Efficient and productive. Because there's ways of being efficient, yet you don't get too much done. Uh, it just means you're doing something easier, but it doesn't mean you're producing more by doing it that way. Yeah. And Brian's doing his walking right now. Awesome. Well, we're glad to help you make it easier. Um, we did our gym workout earlier. That was about 55 minutes Yeah. because we ended up, uh, I kind of pushed the time, but we're going to end up doing our hike after this. Um, but with the organization, I try to be organized, but life happens. And sometimes everything that I put down, it doesn't always, I don't always meet the goal. Um, but with this challenge, I think it's really pushed me to take control of what I'm writing down, what I'm putting into action, and the goals that I'm set to complete. It's not just about making that list and writing things down, but actually completing those tasks on that list. Um, we are in California. Yeah. So Los we are Angeles in Los be. Angeles, California. I want to say a quick thank you to our moderators. Thrifty Nomads, who even though they're out with their kid at, at karate, karate class, they're on here, so they might not be able to hear us. So I'm going to pretend I'm saying things about Will, but uh, we'll find out later. Um, so Stephanie, organization is key. She has a 650-foot 
square foot condo, a separate store for eBay and Posh. Wow. Yes, you definitely have oh, to stay 100%. organized in that. All oh, Loretta's here, our 75 hard challenge queen. Yes. We can do a pull up now, by the way. That's awesome. No, no scotch. This no is scotch. This is literally, it's cold brew. It's not very dark cold brew. But, but it's right. oolong tea. Oh, I thought it was. Yeah. It's not coffee. I got crit. It's not watery coffee. I thought it was watery coffee. I'm like, all right, this is more like tea. Oh, and Debbie's in LA. And Reseller Revolution is on here. Yeah, but we wanted to come on here. And so the last week we were talking about understanding how we were entrepreneurs, really. Well, yeah, we talked about that. And then we also talked about plants in the home. And the reason we were talking about plants and why we put in our stories is because we were trying to really make um, our home, which is where we do a lot of our work, too, a more comfortable place. Um, a more positive workspace for us and with plants there's been like research and science that goes behind plants in your workspace and in your home and it's supposed to help with bringing you know a more positive energetic environment it's supposed to help um create feelings of happiness um and they help clean your air so we have yeah. animals in our house and uh we have a bunch of plants everywhere and we're just trying to make our space just more homey yeah. but also in our office to help us with productivity and you know um and also it taking care of plants requires a routine and anything and reseller revolution which they're in here uh chrissy uh, they were talking about how it's important for different aspects i think she was talking about meal prep and hers mm -hmm. Uh, but even business, getting used to building and keeping to a routine is key. So with plants, you got, I mean, by all means, some of the ones we have are really hard to kill. But if you completely ignore them, they will die. Yeah. So she's got a great system where she knows which plant needs water when and soaking and <laughs> yeah, but um, it was just something that we wanted to incorporate into our home. We had plants, but we were trying to make it even more, I don't know, homey, um, yeah. which is also the other thing that we want to talk about is just, you know, with us being resellers and everyone in the chat being resellers, there's a fine line between your home and your workspace. And we were finding our home to look like a thrift store inside because we would get home, we'd have a ton of inventory. Um, and our process is usually we take the stuff in, I put it into our spreadsheets, um, and we then take that stuff out. If it's hard goods, it goes into the garage. If it's closed, I'll wash it, I'll prep it to be cleaned or steamed, and then it goes into our photo room. But if we have a lot of inventory and it's late, it ends up sitting there. And then we work the next day, our full-time jobs, and then the stuff just kind of piles on. And so we're trying to get into a routine of making sure that our house kind of stays looking like a house. Yeah. And our workspace holds the inventory and the work stuff. Yeah, and part of it was, I mean, we were sourcing, we were sourcing hard. Like we were picking up a few times a week, just piles of clothes being we as her. Um, so then to process that on top of all our other duties, that's what kept slowing us down. Or some days, you know, we'd get over here, we had to go train a couple clients, so we'd leave a pile of clothes and say, we're going to do that later. Then we'd come back at night just in time to eat or beat. I'd do shipping, she'll do a couple listings, stay active, and then the pile stays there. The next day we go thrifting. And, and it, it just happened. kind of adds more. Yeah, and it, it, once we left the first pile, it was a lot easier to leave the second and the third and just started leaving stacks. So, yeah, 100%. It started looking like not necessarily a thrift store because at least that stuff is hanging. We just had, like, the back of a thrift store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but with the challenge, I think it has really forced our hand in writing things down. Um, and Andy Frisella actually talks about um, the power list and he talks about a power list. He writes five things down that those are the things that he has to do that day. 
you know, and it's not just making a list of all the different things that you're doing, like, oh, I have to get up and I have to I like, I have to take the kids to school. I have to then pass by the dry cleaners to get this and then kids pharmacy uh, like for that, this. That's just things you have to do. Yeah, it's making a list of every single task that you're doing throughout the day versus your five priorities. So, you know, for some of us resellers, it's having to put in your five listings or something like yeah. that. Well, actually, I mean, without calling it that, um, Christina, uh, for the resale of it, she in one of her YouTube videos, she had a list. Uh, she has the dry erase board, I believe, yes. where she has a list of things she has to hit. Um, and in that list, it does not include anything that has to do with the kids. No, in that list, it's dedicate X amount of time to revising listings, dedicate X amount of time to sending out offers, and she checks it off. And uh, the reason that's more of the power list is because those are tasks that have a progressive goal would be like, it's it's a goal that's supposed to move you forward, yeah. not just get something done. Yeah, and Loretta's right. There's a lot of research on how physical stuff takes a toll on your mental health. Um, and I would find myself stressed out by seeing so much stuff everywhere. There's just so much clutter. I can't seem to get my mind to focus on the one thing I have to do, um, especially if our office is a mess and I need to go list and I need to go, you know, photograph or steam or wash clothes, but the house is filled with stuff just everywhere. So we're really working on finding a place for everything so that when it gets into the home, it has a location, it's not cluttering the walk space, it's not in our way. Um, and I think that the last like two weeks we've been really focusing on cleaning up our space and making it a more efficient workspace has helped with the mental stress. Yeah, and in terms of, I mean, like she was saying, just having so much that we had to do because again, it's part of procrastinating, like we mentioned, having those piles of clothes slowly build up in the back of our mind, we knew we had to get listings going, mm -hmm. shipping done. There's things that need photographs, there's things that need to get washed and there's piles of stuff that needs to get it put in the inventory. And then every day, It'd be like, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but in a little bit of each, nothing actually yeah. got done. Um, well, it's like my favorite quote from Ron Swanson. Don't half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. Favorite quote, but it's true, though. Um, it's, it's not saying you can't multitask, especially – like moms and women in general i'm not like all the moms in the chat you guys multitask like we've talked to a lot of moms like we babysat for a whole day i was uh, i was beat i was i was beat i was like i don't know how you guys do it I, so but um no it's just it's not saying that you can't multitask it's just you have to be present i think it comes back to being present in whatever you're doing so if you are going to do say in our case inventory is dedicate and stick to doing your inventory, whatever you're going to do, and don't, in the back of your mind, keep thinking, oh, it's already 10 o'clock, I have to go do 10 listings, but I have to just get through what you got to do. Yeah. And that's how we actually started chipping away at all this, is slowly just knocking out everything that just had to get done. Yeah. And uh, last week, I, was, I had asked a question on Instagram about um, working in batches. And so for us, because of our schedule, and to answer uniquely me, we are part-time resellers. Um, because of our schedule with other work, we have certain days that we'll do certain things. So for me, I our photograph um, area for clothing and our rack of clothes, it is in our third bedroom. And that stuff stays in there until Friday. So on Fridays, I will take pictures for you know x amount of time I, i'll set a timer i'll work in batches of like 45 minutes to give myself a short break um but i will do all my pictures on a friday i put them into bins and then i place those bins next to my desk so that on downtime throughout the week i have inventory that's already been photographed measured and bagged and then all i do is i have a scale next to me i will weigh it and then i will do my listings 
but I'm able to focus on the listing and the cross posting because I already have all my stuff measured and photographed. Yeah. And then also like Loretta put in there, it's okay to get help. Yeah. You don't have to do everything on your own. If you have a significant other, whether you're, it's just you two or with kids, find a way to communicate. You got to work together because if you do it all, you definitely get overwhelmed. And like Loretta said, I mean, in terms of her priority list, by all means, you need a house that's clean and functional, but her time is better spent working on her business. And so, with her two kids. Yeah. And, and with her health and husband, like those are so much higher in her priority that it's like, you know what, I'll get somebody to help me clean the house. Uh, whatever I'm paying for, to help get the house clean is worth the brain sand and the brain health I'm getting by yeah. not thinking about that. And also thanks. It just 10 Pac-Man is in here too. I, so thank you for stopping by, but he put on there too, which is also another thing that we think happens signing up for way too many platforms. We're on a few. Um, and to answer Stephanie, we are on Mercari, Poshmark, eBay. We have an account open on TradeZ and Etsy, but we honestly do not focus on those. I think I have two listings on Etsy, but like Loretta and Cindy and everyone else says, you, Etsy needs to stay active. So we've never made a sale on Etsy, but it's not, it's not really our priority. Yeah, and kind of like just 10, like we jumped on saying, you know what, let's diversify, diversify it. I don't know, like we're too diverse. <laughs> yeah. Um, we pulled back a little. Yeah. Yeah, and Chrissy's right. Um, they moved all their stuff into a garage so that they're able to leave work at night, um, which is why we're doing this. Our office is set up for everything. You know, the our other businesses are in our office, um, but we're trying to leave everything in the office and not in the dining room and the living room and the kitchen and have to walk by it every night. Um, yeah, because it's going to be really hard to turn off your work brain. Um, and it's hard because I know a lot of us do work, uh, whether you're part-time or full-time, every time you walk by inventory, it's going to trigger a thought of work. Yeah. Um, even if you're passionate and you love reselling, which a lot of us do, and we're excited to get things listed, selling, we're happy we found something, you got to turn your brain off for a moment and it just lets you see things in di different perspectives. But if you're walking by your piles of stuff, it's hard to forget about it's hard work. to turn your brain off yeah. when you see it even um, going to bed you go to bed you get a glass of water and in the kitchen you got a stack of stuff that has to go to the garage or whatever we're like mm, i'll take that up tomorrow morning yeah um so we tried to list every day i have my planner i always talk about my planner because i love it but in my planner i have a little thing here that i created but this has our platforms, the ones that we focus on. I have my uh, eBay, Posh, Mercari, Sorry. and auction on there, so one that um, so that I can mark down how many listings I do for each one. Um, I do. My goal was to list, I think, five to ten every day, but I got away from that, um, and so I was just listing as many as I could when I had a chance. Yeah, so what that does for our store is it spikes up um, on certain days because she'll go in and she has free time and she'll dedicate, last time you dedicated, uh, what, probably about four hours, four to five hours? Yeah, but because my inventory was next to me, I was able to put in like yeah. 60. And again, it's batching. Yeah, it's batching. So because she had two batches or more of pictures that she had done, she had all that ready to go. And also, I mean, what's the benefit about how you do your pictures and measurements? I don't know. What is it? Is that she takes pictures of the measurements. So she oh, doesn't have yes. to constantly measure, measure, write it down. She just measures it, puts it on a dry erase, right? Then yeah. So I made my own little dry erase board. It's got our Sell Quick Ship Quick logo on it. It's got a cute little background with plants, of course. And then I do the measurements. So for pants, I do... Um, the waist laid flat, inseam, rise, and then the size. The size. Um, and then for tops, it's the chest and length. Um, I don't really do all the other measurements because we 
based on our experience, most people are asking for those measurements are the ones that I put down. Um, and I'd say probably about maybe less than between five to 10% of the situ of met times we'll get a message for one of those other measurements that we don't have on there. Yeah. It's not really common. Um, but uh, because of the batch system, I was able to sit down and on, I think it was a Friday, I didn't have to go into the office. I was able to sit at the desk and work in stages of about 45 minutes. Um, and I normally set a timer, I'll do 45 minutes, I'll do like a five to 10 minute break, get up, walk around, get water. Um, and then I'll continue working. But because I had all my bins with, with my items next to me, all my photos were uploaded on the computer, I was able to sit there and focus on the one task of listing and cross posting. And I was able to cross post um, eBay to Poshmark and Macari. Um, and we've talked about the way that we do our cross posting. I know That's everyone has, method. everyone has their way of doing it. So it's whatever is, whatever works for you and is going to make your time more efficient and effective. Just keep at it. For me, because of the batch system, I upload all the photos and then I have my dual monitors set up so that I can drag and drop photos for each listing across all three platforms. So in one shot, I'll do eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark and all clothing items. Um, doesn't matter what category, I'll put it on all three. Coats, jackets, dresses, shoes. And because they're so different, um, you know, Chrissy was talking about her new with tags, anthropology, I think shorts that sold full price in Mercari. And hearing that you would think anthropology shorts, new with tags, Poshmark, but it's sold on Mercari and we'll get different things for the three platforms and there's yeah. no way to know. We'll sell premium denim in all three platforms, sometimes in the same day in all three platforms. So it's hard to say, you know what, it, these jeans have to go, uh, these jeans have to go on um, Mercari or these jeans have to go on Poshmark. Um, so it's, it's really difficult for us to like differentiate. Like we do have things like, um, for example, electronics. At least for us, don't really sell on Posh. Uh, sorry, not on Posh. Obviously not on Posh, but on um, what do you call it? Mercari. Let's see what else we got here. And everyone in the chat, by all means, uh, we'd like to see what platforms are you guys on. Um, if you guys put on there, Macari, eBay, Posh, uh, Amazon, Etsy, there's a lot I haven't even yeah. heard of. Some of them sound like made up names. Yeah. And we Actually, are. Actually, that's a good one. What? So if you follow us on uh, Instagram, I like to do random reseller games on Fridays. I'm going to start making up names and throwing in real platforms in the middle of them and have to have people choose which one's the real platform. <laughs> Uh, Posh and eBay. Oh, Chrissy, a clean space is a reflection of my life all in order. If you come to my house and clutter and a mess and mess. <laughs> no, and and with that too, it's like the office, we finished it yesterday and it was like a, a sigh of relief. Just, it feels ah, great. It feels good. And we, um, I mean, some like, Lisa was at our house not too long ago. She knew, she knew what our office looked like, and so did uh, Thrifting Nomads. And the way that it was set up, his desk was behind me, so our backs were to each other, and he didn't have a dual monitor. Um, we just set up dual monitors for both of us, and our desks are side by side now um, with a uh, filing cabinet in the middle. So you guys could see it on our Instagram, it's in our story. We put up a picture of how our desks are set up. Um, but having it set up that way, it actually, it feels. Yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> another thing to add to it, we had to get, and I mean, technically we didn't have to, we could have worked to deal with it. But the we have we had an iMac, which is not too old. And the iMac that we have and there's probably, I think it's like 20, 14, 20. No, I think Victor had it for a lot longer. Yeah, but um, it's it was a good, still a good computer. But cross posting, she was. I just I, had too I, many windows open. Yeah, but you needed them. Yeah. And then she would cross post, and then it'd crash. 
So she was too quick for the computer. So we went, got another computer. Now I've got a computer, actual desktop, and I got a new iMac. Yeah. Um, but it's going to help us be more effective when I'm actually yeah. sitting there and, and listing. Kind of with the efficiency part, you have to learn to make those decisions. When it's similar to saying like Loretta saying, when you need to find help, get help for things. She had a she got a cleaning lady, someone to help her clean the house because she found value on that. In our case, the computer is not necessarily cheap, but the time Tiff loses, and we don't have a lot of time because of uh, you know she does her batching. If she has a set 45 minutes and the computer crashes twice, that kills about maybe 10, 15 minutes of that batch time. So instead of dealing with that, she can now truly work for the full time without issues. Um, and then because of the setup, I actually sat down and worked on stuff on the desk. Normally, I just do it mobily because my desk was full of stuff related to our other uh, businesses. And I would just sit on the chair, not yeah. use the desk, and just. But now use we have my a the station for everything, which I I did put um, in the pictures, and so now his work desk has his two compute has his um, iMac and a dual monitor, um, and so does mine. We have a filing cabinet for everything. We actually have a table that has our to be filed receipts, and then it's got the bin for the receipts for. Um, all our thrifting and sourcing. And then we have another table in there, um, a really big table. And then that one, we're actually gonna set up our projector and our light box because we have a bunch of vintage slides that we're going to list. But now that table gets to have all the proper um, space tools to actually go through those slides because we would hate having to put them on the dining table and do it because we would just get left there. And it would lead to just a messy space. Yeah. Oh, Chrissy just got a desk too. On the couch getting distracted by one of her many cute dogs that she's watching. Oh, I love seeing those dogs. The I'm dog gonna... that she had on today was so cute. Is it a Pomer I think it was a Pomeranian. The little white one. A little toy dog, yeah. Yeah, a toy dog. Um, but with our taxes, this is the first time that we did them. So we started January 26th of last year and we got like a, just a nice little wooden filing bin from Target, filled it up with the filing tabs and put in manila folders. I labeled all the manila folders for the entire year. Um, and then whenever we would go to the thrift store, when I get home, I put it into our inventory system. I take those, those receipts. I put them into the manila folder according to the month, and then we file them chronologically. Um, and then at the end of the month, or the hope is at the end of each month, we would be printing out our statements, our eBay statement, our PayPal statement, toss it into the right folder, and then be done with it. Um, so when it came to taxes this time, it was really easy to just grab each folder. Um, we just picked up a little carrying case and we- the accordion ones? That, yeah. Uh, have a little latch so we put it all in there and gave that whole thing to our cpa who was very happy because behind me when i just dropped it off and left um but that's the beauty of being organized is i didn't have to sit there and explain everything because when i look people other businesses that show up to this cpa literally just had like a box boxes of just stuff i can't even say they were all receipts some of them were I don't know what it was, just a yeah. lot of, so that box needs explaining because um, she was organized. Yeah, and I actually had our business, so like um, business receipts, I had them separate. I had honestly I had no idea what they were gonna need. Um, so I just tried to be as organized as possible because I didn't want to stress out come tax season and scramble for things. So I kept any uh, business receipts separate so, the racks, our racks, our storage boxes, our tape, um, lint rollers, anything like that, our steamer, those receipts were separated from our RA and thrifting receipts. Um, and then those were also put in chronological order. Um, and then I actually have like an Excel sheet that I had worked on last year, which would give our accountant a basic summary of our sales. Um, 
and then it actually had a list of all our inventory on there so that they could see the total. A large garbage bag. Oh, that's... That's one way to put things. That's one way to carry your receipts and your tax stuff. It's definitely one way. <laughs> see, um... Oh, yeah, Kiki's mom was working with Not Your Dad CPA, which I found his... So if you guys need Excel sheets or anything like that, and you guys don't already have something, um, Not Your Dad CPA has a free downloadable Google sheet that you can download for free. Um, and you can input your inventory in there. And it's really cool. He's got like a dashboard thing set up. So once you enter it on one sheet, it'll do the automatic calculation onto your dashboard for you. Um, I took his and I made it my own in the sense that I added a few more columns that I felt were necessary for us in tracking our business. I wanted to see the net profit. Yeah. Um, I also added in sheets for last year's inventory. His sheet only included the 2019, but I wanted to converge two uh, inventory sheets together. Um, and it's working out really well. I really like it. It's easy to keep track. Added shipping costs too. It, to yeah, and I also added like that. shipping costs on his was only cost of goods and I added shipping costs. Um, I think PayPal fees. Yeah. I put in all that stuff. People that are listing 50 plus items a day, do they really input everything into inventory? It's a good question. I don't know. If anyone in the chat does that. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. If you're listing 50 items a day, are you putting your stuff yeah. into inventory? Um, I mean, she was able to do that time. She, she, so her goal was 50. I knew she was going to do more, and I told her, and she came out with sixty. So I mean, but, but that was one day. Like one that day. was one day. I did sixty because I sat there and I did it. But the only reason that happened was because you batched and you had yeah. it all pre-done. But I mean, for our inventory, like I, I do itemize each item mainly because I we're still learning, and I want to know what each item costs and is going to sell for. So we're still trying to learn, you know, um, what a good cost of good for a certain item would be for us. I, I know the prices at our stores here are different than someone in Chicago or someone in Portland. Um, and so I always keep track of each item's price because I put that in our SKU. When we receive an offer on any of our platforms, we know how low we'll go because the Price is already included in our SKU. Yeah, and so in terms of offers, um, I mean, if we get an offer, she gets to it first, she takes care of it. But I send out the offers on Posh, now eBay, and then I'm also a lot more active on Mercari um, to send out offers. But it's having a, being organized in this and having that price in the SKU makes so much easier to know what discount you know um our suggestion always for posh and anyone that is doing posh is give yourself enough cushion room in your price so that at the very least you can afford to do that 10 percent and yeah. um, shipping discount so that you can send out offers to buyers because if your price is too strict you will never be able to send out an, uh, an offer and if somebody is trying to make you an offer but your price is true to market that you want people most of the time want to think or feel as though they got a deal and if they're paying sticker price they don't always feel like they got that mm -hmm. deal so at least give yourself that cushion so going back to that skew because she has the price on it as i'm running through looking through posh i can glance and look okay these jeans cost this amount after this and this because especially because posh tells you how yeah. much you're earning I can see, okay, we're making at least 10 bucks on this. Uh, for this case, we can take care of it. We can do it. Um, but it really, being that organized really makes it easier to send out the offers. Uh, yeah, Chrissy mostly shops at the bins um, and she gets a ton of stuff. So I think it would be hard. Would to be, do it, it's yeah. different. And because the majority, and in reselling, we've seen there are, it sounds funny to say, but there's bin people and then there's retail people. And there are people that do both. And if we had, uh, there's one bins we enjoyed that's further it's away. It's about, I, on a good day, it's like 45 minutes. 
but it's more like an hour away from us. So that's more of a planned day. So most of our shopping is at the retail store, which means that we don't get a lot at a time. Um, we might get anywhere from, I would say like 10 to 20 items. Yeah. When and we it's do still, thrift. And, and because it's retail, we have to keep tabs on what we're paying because yeah. one day we might be paying for a pair of jeans Seven ninety nine, and the other day in a different yeah. Goodwill, it's nine ninety nine, and it's just two dollars. But when you're sending out offers, two dollars matters. Two dollars, yeah, two dollars will matter. Um, Loretta, my accountant just wants a tally of cost of goods for each month. My accountant doesn't want an itemized Excel sheet of their things I've purchased. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't know. Yeah, I just, and, well, I mean, and the thing is that in the setup that we gave it uh, the CPA, she did get the the full what we spent cost of goods cost of the other business expenses and then she got for each month all that information as well as our sales um now going back to the itemized portion that's more for us that's i'm worst case scenario if anything happens with the yeah. taxes that's also there but I just like seeing all this i i i personally like seeing my inventory sheets um as detailed as possible but that's something that i like to do and i know a lot of people talk about just doing an average cost of goods um i just can't get myself to do that and it makes of, sense no it makes sense and, and it makes scaling, life easier yeah. as you scale um but you know like chrissy at the bins because the majority of her stuff is at the bins it's a lot it, it makes sense to just do cost general mm -hmm. cost of goods um but in our case like i said because we do retail prices vary and we also want to know um slowly start picking up on the trend where we can say all right you know if we're at a thrift store and we see this brand at this price okay for sure yeah. we'll pick it up at this price no there's no room for us yeah so uh our item yes it's chronological so on our on my on my spreadsheet i actually shared that with cindy and i spent a oh, Sunday, oh, yeah, Sunday. <laughs> geeking out with Cindy because I showed her my spreadsheet to see if I got the Cindy approval. Um, but on my spreadsheet, every time we go to a thrift, every time we source, I'll input it right away. So it just goes to the bottom of the list. Um, and then on Sundays, Sunday morning, what I'll do is I'll total up the week's sales and I'll pull up Mercari. I'll search for that item in my Excel sheet or my Google sheet. Um, and then I'll input the price that we sold it at, see how much we netted off that item, see if that particular item should be picked up again. Um, and then once I input that into my Excel sheet, it'll automatically upload and generate the new numbers and the dashboard. Um, and I'll do that for Mercari. I'll do it for Poshmark. I need to do eBay's. Um, but eBay is just a little trickier because it does break down like all the costs versus Poshmark just tells you their fee. Their so final, yeah. And then with Poshmark, so in terms of the different columns we have for that spreadsheet, Poshmark also has a shipping cost one because in our case, if we send out an offer and they accept it and they accept a one ninety nine discount of shipping, that means technically we paid one ninety nine for shipping on their end. So then that's mm -hmm. what goes on for that um but other than that like the cost and everything is yeah. pretty safe and then also for chrissy we um in our SKU, i also put the date that we picked it up because if we're accepting offers or if we're making offers and we see the date in there and it's you know a long time if it's like over six months we're more likely to be a little bit more lenient especially with clothing um because clothing is i mean there's certain things that will always be in trend and needed but because things are style if we're waiting so long yeah we might not make the sale on this item because we held out and it's no longer cool mm -hmm. and loretta said it and i think it was one of the chats i don't know if it was a video or a chat but loretta was saying like if you're take if you have clothing items and it's taking like six months to sell it's not a good piece to pick up yeah actually i mean if you I guys mean, if, if you guys missed piece, the, then it's different yeah if you guys missed reseller revolution they just literally finished their chat right before we started um and they talk about that working your store is when you really have long tail and stuff that has to be long tail and when you have 
things that seem to be long tail that shouldn't be long tail. Like in some cases, non-vintage clothes. You know, yeah. like if you're picking up a floral, I'm just throwing out things, free people shirt, and you have it in your store for about nine to 10 months, there might be something wrong with your pricing, with something's mm -hmm. up. And if all that looks perfect, like Cindy and Amazing Taste said, you picked up a dead and that's okay. You just got to admit it to yourself yeah. instead of continuously pushing the idea of this is so cute. Somebody's going to want it. It's exactly what she said. Yeah. But it was you who wanted that item, not someone else. Not someone else. And um, because of the way we have our SKU set up, we'll randomly see things in our store. From when we first started learning how to resell, we were picking up things that, you know, we were, we, we didn't know clothing. And we we're just picking things up that people were suggesting. And we looked up comps. We didn't really know what was going to be good profit. We didn't know yet. And we were still learning. So we picked up some clothing items just to test them out. You know, some of that stuff is still sitting still in our there. store. Um, and we, I, I mean, some of it we actually did send to auction. And, and some sold. of it actually sold in auction, which is nice. But it doesn't, I mean, even sending some of that stuff to auction, it really doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sell. Um, but there are some stuff that right now it's just like, and I can tell by pictures when I'm sending out offers, like, just, just pay us what we paid, please. <laughs> Take it. You have uh, Kelly Hip Flippin' Mamas in the chat. Hello, hello. Yeah, and then I, I sent my spreadsheet to Lisa, Kiki's mom. She was with me, and she saw my spreadsheet, and I wanted to see what she thought of it. So I sent it to her. She's been using it. Um, and then I also gave it to Jenny to test it out because I don't know. You know, I like the way that it works, but... She works a specific way, and she works very detailed, and not everyone is detailed. And the way that spreadsheet that she's set up, if you're not detailed, it's not going to work. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a balance. So, um, but it, just 10 Pac-Man said we should do a video on our taxes and how we organize ourselves for taxes. I mean, we still don't know. Like, what we did for taxes, we haven't sat down with our CPA because um, Hugo just dropped off the filing box for them. Yeah. This is also the CPA that helps us with our family's restaurant and our personal taxes. So, they've been working with us for the last, like, 10 years. Um, yeah. So we just dropped off the, the box for them and they just took care of it and called us and told us a number and said, here, pick up your paperwork. Mm -hmm. But we do, we, we are going to sit down with our CPA soon and um, talk to them and figure out if everything I gave them was necessary or if there's anything that I didn't need to print out for them. Yeah. Or if there's any way we can, we're missing out on uh, deductions. I mean, there's a big changes in deduction between taxes last year and this year. We don't know it because last year we weren't even capable of doing these deductions because we weren't in the business. We weren't uh, doing this. Um, this time around, we might be missing out on new deductions. So it's all about continuing to try to stay in tune and learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's organizing. That's what we, and that's why we want to talk about that. It took time for us to, again, clean up. Like, and we go through stages. Things happen. We have family over and slowly piles start yeah. building. I'm feeling sick and then I'm feel, not. Yeah, yeah, she's not feeling great. Um, and we get things building up. But, and it happens. But if you just sit there and you don't take action, it's not going to change. Yeah. So, and we were trying to take action on everything at once. That wasn't working. So then, by we, I mean she really made a difference. Our bunnies are making noises. Yeah. Are you planning on adding children to your life? Well, right now we have two cats and mm -hmm. four rabbits. Um, we have fur babies for now. We have a lot of fur babies. Yeah. And that's enough for now. For now. <laughs> But we, we've gotten that question, and in terms of business, and there's plenty of moms out there that changes everything, yeah. which is and why we always say how we do things and, and it works we for also us. have to plan for something like that. I have lupus, 
Yep. And uh, I'm on medications, and it's not. We can't just have like kids without a plan. On, uh, on the other hand, in in our situation, it, she can't accidentally get pregnant because we have to have it planned out because yeah. of medication. Because I get the. And a lot of plant babies, yes. Yes, we do have plenty of plant babies. A lot of plant babies, like 30 plant babies. We were, we did a count and then... Or like 30 plus because we also have our front porch. That's what I was going to say. That's only indoors. Our front porch is outside. It's still... Because like Chrissy, I'm like, oh, if I propagate these plants and I put them into cute teapots that I pick them up from Goodwill, I could sell them on offer up or next door or let go or five miles. And so I've been propagating because if you check on eBay, you can sell plant prop plant cuttings for a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, if it's it, the right if you one. Get the, if you grow the right plant, you can sell, and it sounds like it's not that much, but you can sell one leaf cutting for, I think it would, some of them range up to like $15, $20. But, but we're talking about one leaf. For fifteen to twenty dollars plus, in some cases, priority shipping. Yes, I looked it up today. There is like a, a leaf cutting for like fifty dollars. Yeah, and in there, it's it's in the description. Like, hey, we're gonna do our best to ship this to you safely and live and quick. So if you get the leaf cut cutting and you try to propagate it and it doesn't give, well, you just spent yeah, but. I mean, there's money in plants. There's a lot of money in plants. Um, thank you, Uniquely Me. What beautiful babies we would make. They'd be bearded. Bearded? Uh, bearded, beautiful, and hardworking. Okay. But you'd need a lot of filters to see the kids. Money babies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, key lime kisses. Thank you for making it. Yeah. So plant babies, animal babies, that's that's our life right now. And yeah. reselling and work and, and work. all that good stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it, I don't know if you guys have any questions. We're coming up towards the end of our live here. Um, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell so you know we're coming on live. And the thumbs up. And the thumbs up. Uh, we do a lot on Instagram. Uh, I do goofy stuff, but at the same time, I try to always bring it back to being reseller related. Uh, she puts up great tips. Um, but we also have, uh, again, we mentioned in the beginning of the chat, um, Wednesday. With, we'll be on, yep, thrifting, thrifting, biking. Yeah, so if you don't follow them already, you guys can find them on Instagram and We'll be on her live on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Look at that. Oh, Vicky. Yes, drowning in clothing. We were we were drowning. And because we cleaned up, I had a whole There's pile a of stuff that was like on this chair. We had bags all over our living room. We had Against, pins everywhere. We were trying to feel like, oh, well, we're, we're not going to have it in the way. So that just meant we had Goodwill bags against the walls and slowly stacking up against the walls. And then we just, yeah. Yeah. But getting organized, like, really, really put us in, like, a good mood. Mm -hmm. and, like, we felt so accomplished putting everything away. And then I like to label everything. So I got to pull out my little label maker. It sounds funny, but, like, it felt really good to sit at a desk and use a desktop. I haven't used the, the computer desktop setup in a while because I just had so much stuff. Uh, so sitting down, even though I was just sending tax-related emails and offers, offers, and it was just it was a difference. It was. I nice. think you sent out offers to our entire eBay store. Yeah. Um. In in terms of that, uh, we've talked about it with other people, and I mean, Cindy, amazing taste, made a great point. We and I. That's the reason why I've sent out offers on Posh. I will put our posh closet on our on my phone and I'll put it in order just in and I will go each one down. I'll try to do that at least once a day. Our closet has gotten so much bigger because we have so much more clothes that it's coming to happen like every two days to get through the whole thing because I'm doing it between things. But I'm sending out offers on everything. Even though those offers are not really getting picked up, it's a lot of activity 
on our account. So yeah. besides sharing, we got all these offers going out, which is great for visibility. But likewise on eBay, sending out all the offers, except this time around from uh, Cindy, Amazing Taste, great tip in the messages, write something that will provoke interaction. Um, not clickbait, don't just put some random clickbait thing in there, but just something that's gonna provoke, promote them to either one, I mean, hopefully bought, accept your offer, mm -hmm. or second, counter it. So something where you'll say you're open to offers or whatever you want, um, which I'm gonna start doing. Uh, and messages, I was just putting, thank you for stopping by our store. Really appreciate your business today or in the future. Yeah. And I just copy paste that and kept dropping it in all of them. <laughs> um, Cheryl's asking, is there any research materials you use and recommend to someone thinking of starting out from scratch? Not the buying, but more of the business setup. I mean, we, for us, A lot learning. Of learning by doing. Yeah. We learn by doing and by failing and by making mistakes because it's inevitable. And it's probably better when you start early and make your mistakes early on before you've invested a ton. Um, we've heard really bad stories of some people going out and buying all the top of the line equipment, buying the entire photo setup, you know, all the lights, the expensive lights, getting all the replacement bulbs and picking up the top of the line um, steamer and getting all this stuff that isn't quite necessary when you first start, buying all of it, starting out, and then realizing they hated it, or yeah. they didn't want to go out and thrift and do everything that reselling entails, and then having to sell off their inventory and having to sell off all their equipment. If you're new to reselling, from our experience, sell whatever you have in your house first, it's the best way to make a mistake mm -hmm. and don't Get be afraid your free stuff. don't be afraid to make mistakes as long as you learn from them don't make a mistake and then keep repeating the same mistake exactly um analyze your mistakes just figure out what happened uh but it's so much better when it's something you already own at home yeah and then you know it's a it's a glass that you have at home you ship it it breaks and you refund them but um it's just a lot it's better for you because then it breaks you refund them technically you, you lost out an opportunity to sell something yes yeah. but you didn't pay five ten bucks for this glass and then you lose that on top and the way we started um i read the marie kondo book years ago um like two years ago two three years ago but i read her book i dumped all our stuff into the living room we did the condo cleaning method and i put aside a bunch of stuff and i was like here try and sell this I mean, we sold the most random things. I went into our kitchen and I found the extra pieces that um, come with like a food processor, the little adapters. We sold that adapter. Because we weren't gonna we weren't using we never it. used it, yeah. And then there was like an extra Cuisinart blade, sold that. We had an avocado slicer that I used twice, sold that. Manuals, I keep all our appliance manuals, went through our filing cabinet, pulled out all the CD-ROMs, all the appliance manuals. And CD-ROMs like to install a uh, printer. Like the reset printer ones. Sold that stuff. And some of them are, I think one of them was like 99, like Canon something from 99. And we sold that for like, you know, and because it was just stuff from our home, we sold it for like $6 and made $2, which was fine with us because we were learning. One, it's a $2 learning game. And it and got the stuff out of our house. Yeah. And activity. And then you get to get your feedback growing and all that good stuff. Too. Yeah. So for sure, like watch the watch the different content that you find online. Um, that's how we learned a lot. And right now there's so much content that's provided out there. If you follow Reseller Revolution, five women who have a take, their own take on business and how they do things. And it's really valuable information to learn from. Um, and going on, you know, YouTube, there's so many people on here that are giving out free content. There's so many people on Instagram that are providing tips. Pick up stuff that you are finding on the web and use that to start your business without going out and spending thousands of dollars. Like, Our first round of pictures, I was taking them with at the time, I think it was iPhone the six. iPhone 6. On our wooden table. On a wooden table. 
Our lighting was awful. At first, it was yellow lighting because I would only have time to take pictures at night, but that would realize how ugly that was. So then our first version of adjusting light was just taking pictures during the day with windows open. Mm -hmm. And our house was really dark, so we didn't really get nice natural light. And if we took it outside, we had a huge shadow because of our driveway. Um, and so we picked up those foam boards from the 99 cent store, made a little wall thing and Started took the pictures that, on that. And that was our second step. Mm -hmm. So we still, we did multiple things and pictured and we photographed it was like and months sold in, yeah. multiple stuff with that uh, natural window light and, and wood then the, floors. I think the profits that we got from the stuff that we were selling that was free because it was from, from home. our home, we got a roll of thermal printer. Yeah, that was one of the first things we got. Mm -hmm. Part of it was... But we didn't spend our own money. Yeah, to do. the money we made from reselling is what we used to buy because we were taping a lot, which yeah. is fine in the beginning. But once you get more packages going... It makes a difference. It makes a difference. And then also just the cost. It's really... It sounds funny, but it, you spend more money taping down pieces of paper than if you just have a roller printer that prints out one thermal label. Yeah. Um, Cause Cheryl's asking about setting up a business account. Um, we set up our business account. So we set up our business account, but that was after I was already selling on my own. In the beginning I sold on my own probably for about four months. Maybe um, I like to joke around that it's proof of concept, <laughs> but when it started really growing and I was just doing it on my own, then she helped me start sourcing and she would just help me like, Hey, here, this looks like it's, it's worth something. Yeah. Go for it. And then I started getting more things and then she jumped in when things were getting, you know, my piles system was no longer organized. Um, but that's when I realized, okay, well now that she's joining me, we're going to get serious. We're going to treat it like a business. This is no longer just a, some extra money to go eat. Um, then that's when I decided to go out and get the business. And at least I'm not sure where, but in California, before I could get a business account at a bank, I had to go get a fictitious name, mm -hmm. um, which meant getting, so I went through and I got our reseller permit yeah. and business license and then went to get, um, the business bank account. But uh, that was after once we ran a few months and knew this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, Vicky, yeah, we had an iPhone six that we were taking pictures with yeah. right now. We do have the iPhone 10. Yes. Now uh, we do. Now we do. But, but that's, we ran that's what on we the, use. Yeah. We ran on that iPhone six probably. For a while. And we actually have some friends that use, um, what does Amber use? Like an Android, I think to take pictures. Um, but you can, you know, find you buy, some good um, natural lighting for yourself to take your pictures if you can. There's apps out there too. Yes, so say, Photo say, Fuse is yeah, one of the ones. Photo Fuse is a big popular one now. So say your phone can't adjust lighting well. Well, do your best with your pictures on your phone, then jump on to a uh, photo editing app mm -hmm. and brighten your picture. Um, you don't have to do it for all your pictures, at least your cover picture. Yeah, and I know some people use PicTap Go. I, I can't remember what Loretta suggested, but I remember hearing PicTap Go, Photo Fuse. Um, some people use Adobe Photoshop, um, the app on their phone. But, you know, there's different things that you can find to help adjust your pictures if you can't get it to look the way that you want it to look. Yeah, um, there's ways around it, and um, you don't need the higher end. So right now, but we actually have our LED, LED lights. lights. And if you guys are interested in a lot of the stuff we have, uh, we have links underneath the description of all our videos. Of everything, of everything that we, we use. use, but uh, you can also go to um, Christina's video is really good on her lighting setup. Like if you yeah. are oh, new, Christina's from Resale Revolution. She had a video on a real just grassroots MacGyver, just MacGyver setup using. Um, I think she was saying like five dollar Walmart lamp, like Target, desk lamps, yeah. Like, but she has like the board set up, and she just has these lights that are clamped on, and she has a little lazy Susan inside. Pretty much the lamps that you see that are really cheap on sale. Like the dorm, dorm room dorm lamps. Rooms, yeah. And um, she explains it's all about the bulb. The wattage, yeah. So if you go to Reseller Revolution's channel and you look for that video of Christina with the lights, I don't remember what the thumbnail looks like, but she shows you how to set up a lighting system for cheap. 
And if you're new to it and you don't want to shell out and you don't need to shell out a lot of money, go look at her setup and go pick up some cheap lamps and bulbs and take your pictures that way. Yeah. And, and her for, pictures and are again, perfect. If, if you can get, um, what do you call it, natural light, that really is the best light. Because the bulbs that you get and the LED lights we actually have set up right now. Sorry, when I look up, it's like I'm looking at the sun. Um, but when we, the point of these is to mimic the natural light. So yeah. if you could use natural light, that's better than any bulb you're going to get. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we have our LED lights. We, ne we didn't want to get the umbrella lights because we didn't want to replace bulbs. There was a, actually a fitness photographer at the gym that we train at. And he used the newer LED lights and he's like, this is great for what you're planning on using them for. I look They're like a creep because he was taking care of his filming and everything. I was on the side working out, just like staring, trying to figure out what he had. And finally, uh, I went over to talk to him so he didn't think I was just being a creep. But um, we got, and then these lights fold down completely. You can detach the light. You can carry them around if you needed to. Yeah, these turn into a brief yeah. suitcase. And we never got an SLR camera. We just used we our We had phones. one for a while um, that was one that we had, but we never we used it. Yeah, we never used it for the purpose of reselling. Wasabi. This is so wasabi. So this is Wasabi. One of the fur babies. Yeah. He's um, a mama's boy. But we'll cut it because we're over. Oh, yeah, we're over our time. But again, if you guys uh, ever want to reach out to us, the quickest way is on Instagram. Instagram, uh, sell quick, ship quick. Um, we're here and we're working on 100%. We will do some kind of video live or not once a week. Yeah. We're going to get that going. Um, we have uh, that live on IG, so you guys can find <laughs> us there. It. And then on IG, we do random lives now too. Um, and then the other great thing, anyone in here that speaks Spanish, we are working to build out of our same channel, um, actual, actual Spanish videos. content too. Uh, we're in the mix of actually talking with uh, a big uh, Spanish content for reselling, specifically Amazon um, YouTube content creator. So we're excited we can get that going too. International lives. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Hope it, you know, works. But. <laughs> but thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Chrissy. We appreciate everyone joining us in the chat. You know, hope we answered some of your questions. Um, and then if you have anything else, you can just message us and we guarantee we will answer you. One of us will One answer of us you. Will. And if I don't know the answer, I'll turn around and tell her, oh, check the message. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful night. And see you guys later. Bye-bye.